Hi everyone, it's Chelsea here, bringing you another segment of Living in Southwest Florida. The holidays are over and a new year has begun. Every day I field questions asking about how the real estate market is doing, so today let's discuss exactly that, the stats for December's real estate market. But before we jump in really quickly, it would mean a lot to me if you could go ahead and hit that like button so that the YouTube algorithms share this information with others and they let me know what you'd like more of. As a thank you, here's a video of some of the ducks currently visiting Rotary Park in Cape Coral. See, we really do have snowbirds here. And real quick, I wouldn't be doing my job right if I didn't remind you how much we love helping people from all over the country buy and sell their homes here in Southwest Florida. So if you or anyone you know of are even thinking about moving here, then feel free to use this contact information below. All right, let's jump right in. So just to break down what you can expect in this video, the first thing we're going to be looking at is what the numbers are for December stats, then what those numbers mean, and finally what we're going to continue to watch for in the future. Let's start with the beginning, which would be having homes to sell. So let's discuss how many new homes were listed last month in December of 2021. We saw 2,895 new listings. Now, I know this is just numbers with no context, but to put this in perspective, this was actually about 8% less homes than we had saw list in November. And November and December, new listings are historically always reduced going into the holidays. So this is completely normal for the time of year, but it is down year over year. And we'll talk about what that means and with the context in a little bit. All right, so new inventory is down. And yes, I am hearing from many buyers that I speak with, wondering if there's a many houses for them to choose from. But an equally important question that people wanna know is, if I find the house and I make the move, how much can I expect to pay? Well, in Southwest Florida, the median price went up slightly for a third month in a row to a median sales price of $400,000. This was a median of 3,473 homes that closed. And hang with me a bit though, because I am gonna explain these numbers here shortly as well. Before I do though, like I do in all of these videos, I wanna point out that I'm using median prices instead of average prices. Average prices will put all of the sales together and divide the number of houses. This month, our lowest sold property in the MLS was very clearly mistakenly input sales price of $191 for a very nice three bedroom villa in Fort Myers that really did sell for $191,000. I actually had several buyers call looking in this price range and type of home, so I wanna take a real quick moment and point out, look, they do exist. On the other end of the spectrum was the most amazing Naples beachfront home in the elusive Port Royal community that sold for $49.5 million. That view will never get old. Obviously, neither of these homes are middle of the road, and so they do skew numbers when we're talking about average prices. Instead, I'm gonna use median prices, which draw a line in the middle point and puts one above, one below, one above, one below, until we find exactly where that middle of the market would be. And for us, this month, that middle point is right at 400,000. I also wanna pause here a moment, really quick, as my monthly reminder to remind homeowners who have financed their homes that if they haven't done so already, it would be prudent on checking those refinancing rates and see that if you have your PMI on there, it can be dropped. With the increases in equity, many homeowners will find themselves with more than enough to meet the 20% threshold. And with interest rates starting to rise, it doesn't hurt to speak with a lender to see if you can optimize your loan first. And if you need a great lender recommendation, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to provide names of people I've worked with in the past that have done a great job. So I'm sure you're wondering what all this means and let's take a minute to break it down. Let's go back to the new inventory comparisons. While it's completely normal for the market to be quieter during the holiday season, if we compare the last few Decembers, we saw that between 300 and 500 less homes this year came on market than previously. And yes, it would be easy to write off the lower inventory this year because a lot of homes did sell this summer when the market was going completely crazy. Many people who may have waited until later. But it's not the full picture because in reality, it was still one of the lowest months for new listings in the last five years, only being beaten out twice. One of which was April of 2020, aka the start of the pandemic, and the other being September of 2017, aka the month that Hurricane Irma hit. So yes, we had very little new inventory spring up. 
and the new listings weren't the only number that had fallen because we're carrying such little inventory right now, the number of homes sold correlated and we saw close to a thousand less homes sell this year than last. We're currently sitting on one month's worth of inventory, which means if we sell out every single home on the market today and not add any others, it would take us one month to sell every single one. For a balanced market, we'd be looking at four to six months of supply. So being in only one month of inventory is really low for us. And it definitely illustrates that we're still in a seller's market. And interestingly enough, even when we saw the crazy spikes over the summer and everyone was saying, look, there's nothing to buy. We had almost twice more homes to sell then than we do now. Sellers were selling their homes. It was just that the demand was so high, they weren't sticking around long enough to impact our availability rates. This is all illustrating my point that the summer market conditions have essentially not changed. There are few homes on the market. Those that are on market are benefiting from the lack of competition and that's allowing the prices to still go up. I do want to give some context though, and some consolation though, to the buyers. The good news is that it's not going up as briskly as it was previously. Home prices rose sharply through those first six months of the year, but many people felt buyer burnout and left the market for a while and they didn't return again until later in the year. This means that the rise in home prices did take a little break for a bit and even held flat for month to month between June and July and reduced a tad for August and September. But for those who are holding out for the big drop, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it is just not forecasting yet. For starters, I think that many buyers out there that were previously holding out for a drop are now realizing that it's not on the horizon and are returning to the market before the interest rates rise more. While we've talked about not having homes to sell, what I haven't really said is that we, we don't have enough homes for the population, period. We are already struggling prior to the pandemic to build enough homes for the demand. And with construction stopping for the pandemic, that problem became exasperated. And when landlords sold their rental homes, that exasperated the problem even more. We are building constantly, but we're still trying to play catch up for the needs of the city. We also have very low potential for foreclosures. This area has always had a large amount of homeowners who are all cash, which leaves less opportunity for a home to be foreclosed on to begin with. Couple that with low unemployment rates and high rates of equity, and there aren't really ideal circumstances for a foreclosure to happen. In fact, for the month of December, out of the thousands of homes in the region, there were only 22 that entered pre-foreclosure status. Out of thousands. So I think that this is pretty apparent that the rate is incredibly low and not a real factor for creating disruption. I guess what I'm saying is that if you decide to buy now, we aren't showing signs just yet of it getting any lower and it may be worth hanging on through these challenging conditions before they rise higher. Let me be clear, real estate is cyclical. It will rise and it will fall. But if a homeowner's timeline for ownership is long enough, they'll typically see a rise and fall over many years, creating mass equity over a long period of time. Remember back when buyers in 2007 who bought right before the big crash? Since then, we have long superseded their highs because the calendar was long enough to ride through those storms. As we go up, it will always be a question on, is this the top? Those in June and July were afraid they were at the top of the market, and it wasn't. Around this time of year, we do usually see a big spike of new inventory. Sellers who wanted to wait until the holidays are over will return to the marketplace. And with the additional snowbirds that are visiting, in years past, we've seen sellers come to the market to capitalize on that. Truthfully, I haven't seen that just yet. So far, we're still halfway through January and we haven't seen the big spike we were expecting to see of new listings. I do suspect that this is in part in check because of Omicron having a spike, but we are currently keeping an eye to see if the big increase is coming. As I've mentioned, we definitely have our snowbird back and I do expect to see a lot of activity heading into February and March. Sellers, I cannot stress enough how great these market conditions are for you. If you are considering selling, doing so with the low current competition would be a great time to capitalize. Feel free to call me for my opinion on your home or see if I have a buyer looking for what you have to sell. Odds are there is someone in my database looking for a home just like yours. And buyers, my best advice is to hold the course. Interest rates are expected to rise, home prices are expected to rise, and I would hate for anyone to be waiting to make life stage changes get priced out simply because they wanted to wait for a drop. Many people here move here for lifestyle that they want to have. And if that's still true for you, then you're going to want to keep your eyes peeled and your nose to the ground. 
when it's meant to be, it will be. If you have questions about this data, or if you'd like to drill down and compare specific neighborhoods, like say Cape Coral versus Fort Myers, or waterfront homes, or pool homes, or whatever your specific circumstances call for, then feel free to reach out to contact information in the description below. Myself and the network of agents I have throughout the United States are here and ready to help you with your move. Also, feel free to use Cape Coral Fort Myers Real Estate.com for all the latest listings to hit the market and begin getting comfortable with our marketplace. There's no obligations. If you're ready to get the ball rolling on your move to Southwest Florida, then there's a link in the description below to set up a personalized home search that'll be tailored to you. Oftentimes when we search web aggregates, it limits our capabilities, but when I build this search, it will have many more options available and we can begin a conversation about what your home in Florida will look like. There will also be a link in there for you to be able to set up a private Zoom conversation so we can discuss this further. And don't forget to add me on social media and follow along as we post weekly articles and information that you may find handy and give you insight as to what life in Florida looks like. And as always, we really appreciate it when you leave us a comment and hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bells so that you can be notified when we drop future videos that may help you with living in Southwest Florida. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I wish you much health and happiness.